Aloha my kako and welcome to Midday Manao with me, Hana and Manu. Manu couldn't join us today, but we wish him well as he does fabulous things across the Honua. Uh, wanted to, right at the top of the show, acknowledge our sponsors, the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement and also Kaiser Permanente Community Benefit Fund. Today, I get to sit in a, in a chair that is usually occupied <laughs> by my guest. He's usually the one asking all the great questions to fabulous people in Oahu and also talking about things that mean a lot to us here as Poi Hawaii and as local people um, who have to traverse our landscape, our beautiful landscape here in Hawaii. None other than our very own Kamakapili. Aloha, my kako, brother. Aloha, mahalo for having me. And thank you for such a beautiful introduction. No, I love introductions, you know. It's kind of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. It's, Can it's we start what this I like again? to do. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what else you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's add more, more, Mihana, more. <laughs> you know, and like I said, many of you have um, caught Kamakapili's um, show on KHON, Aloha Authentic, and also his daily. Right, you're on Monday through Friday, right? On the news, Wednesday through Sunday. Oh, Wednesday Stay through Sunday. Five days, though. Five days. Still, yeah, five days. Still okay, 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 okay. Shift the week. Had to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's bad when I don't know as the host, but a little bit more bad when you forget what days you work. <laughs> now, nah, but I know that it's just all a lot of excitement and energy that you guys put into the show, and you are again besides the the weather and the news, you get to bring our people. Um, thoughts and ideas about the things that are right around them, our streets, the names of places. Um, that's so important in this day and age, right? I think it's just so interesting. So when, when it came about, opportunities presented itself. And one thing I've always was told was you just always go with opportunities. And the whole thing was that if I think it's interesting, I'm hoping other people may too. So thank you that it's gone this far. How did, it, how did that all start? First of all, how did you start in TV? Because I was telling him earlier, the first time I met him, he's an artist. He's also an artist, right? And he makes beautiful jewelry. I love his jewelry. I still, and you might be thinking, okay, Mihana, well then, can you buy one of them? Because, you know, I don't I see mean, your name on my sales anything. sheet. I will, though. I will. I promise, I promise, I will. The, the last um, time I saw you at a craft fair, you know, was before the pandemic. So I'm looking forward um, to seeing your stuff now. And now I can afford it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's such beautiful pieces. And so that was the first time I met you as an artist. Um, and how did you make the transition to TV? It was nothing that I had planned at all. Um, was Halloween night on 2017. I got a, a message from an old coworker that I used to work with of a video of this Hawaiian boy spray painting Prince Kuhio and his statue mm -hmm. in Waikiki. Right, I remember that. So he sent it to me and he's like, I know this is gonna piss you off. Just don't say my name, but do with it whatever you wanna do with it. So I, and at that point, I already started these street segments and it was real something just because I felt I had the opportunity with social media. Go make one minute videos under a street sign name of just elaborating what the name means. And then I found out you can make a very cheap website so I was putting all these videos on the website, not really knowing what I was gonna do with it. And then this video came on, onto my phone and then I just figured, you know, I, I went on the internet, I found all the emails I could find on every single news station <laughs> from the news director to the, the head person to all the reporters, whoever's emails was on there. And I just sent that video and my website. And I just pitched the idea that, you know, if there is more cultural integration within the news, maybe things like this would never happen because we would know who Prince Kuyo mm -hmm. was and then we mm -hmm. would be respectful of the things that we still benefit from him. So, and it, as a viewer, we would learn who we are for free, you know, and in my mind, the station would get some credits because they're looked upon as someone who cares about this knowledge to share it. And then it would be a win for me because I needed a job. <laughs> so <laughs> fortunately, it all worked out, and that was my step. Into the so business. for all you young people out there, this is what hustle looks like, <laughs> right? When you, it, there's not an opportunity there. You create the opportunity, right, by pushing forward. And something, and it just so happens to be something you, you totally believe in, right? It was um, something that, you, like, right, like the world needed to hear, and, and especially people in here in Hawaii needed to be educated on it. 
right? So mahalo, props to you. I didn't realize you, you, never, you were. You never know what you yeah. know, what you can do unless unless you try it out. Right, right. You just gotta try. You gotta put put it out there. Put it out into the universe and and see what comes back. Um, so that was great. So now you you move in. Um, you're you're in the news. We all start seeing you. You know, surprise. Um, I'm sure there. nobody expected that <laughs> as much as I. <laughs> no, it was great though. But it made sense. You know, it was just like okay. Akamai, right, and and Ui, right, like oh. Nani Kaikena, right. So if you guys don't know that term, Nani Kaikena, right, this to to look it's like so beautiful to look at. I'm not going to yeah. be able to afford the invoice I have to send you after this, <laughs> all these compliments. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nani, free on the house, on the house, no worry, no worry. But you know, so it totally made sense. You know, you had such a charisma on on camera. You know, it just worked, right? And then, of course, you was I yeah, from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm not Portuguese. I have not one ounce of Portuguese blood in me, but I want to, and I keep striving to be a Portuguese <laughs> grandma. Yeah, we'll have another whole show about that, you know. And I want to marry a Portuguese plumber. So if you have a Portuguese plumber, cousin, uncle, whatever, you know. hook me up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the key features of your show, right, the... Um, the new segments that you do um, go to naming, right? Go mm -hmm. to naming, whether it's street signs and getting people localized to where they're at and what some of these names mean to actually larger areas and talking about names. Why names? Why, why was names so important for you to, to well, highlight? I think first and foremost is, and this is just me when, when somebody says Hawaii or Aloha mm -hmm. or, you know, not necessarily putting them down for the mispronunciation, but then it just falls back on, on me thinking, are we doing the best job that we can to educate how these names are properly pronounced? Right. And I think it was just always, I was raised just knowing that Kamaka, you know, means the eye, but then there's so much more of a deeper name when you hear the whole name in its uh, entirety. And then, you know, I, I was raised as a Christian and going through a church and then kind of stepped away and then got myself back into reading more of the Bible on my own time. And then you just really, realized at least in the biblical sense the importance of names and, mm -hmm. and back in that time mm -hmm. so it was a really big connection for me in in the faith-based sense and then also as a hawaiian and when we look at our names and being raised in the hula aspect we named our implements we named the bags that we put the implements in mm -hmm. because it's their home and there's so just there was always pieces around me as i grew up that just always show the care that we should be given when we either name something or just like the, the care that you take upon when you're mentioning the name right and i've always believed that names also you you start to live into that name um you know your name is is kamaka and it probably like you said has a longer meaning my name is mehano kala so when i realized what my name meant then i started to become that mm -hmm. you know i strive to become that become mehano kala you know rather than the intense heat of the sun or the chilling freezing cold you know it's Mihano Kala that I strive to mm. kind of be, right? And, and so when you name like your children, right, you want them to have these names that are aspirational or that give off really good mana, right, mm. to them. So it can help protect them and guide them, mm. right, through their lives. Um, so yeah, love, love that focus. I, I always thought it was funny though, because Kamaka, I have a really bad vision. So I know the jokes of my parents would name me that part. So I'm still curious, like, what does Kamaka actually mean? Yeah, no, it's your one on like, close your eyes. Close, I think see, which, just the inside if you open eye. your eyes, you have bad vision. When you close your eyes, oh, Perfect. extremely thoughtful. Yeah, no, and that's that kind of vision. Yeah, is also probably embedded in your name. But I, I always felt that. that, you know. So so when it came about and, and just paying attention to the street names, I, especially you know, Kinao is the one that's always thrown right. out that it's just like ugh, right. nails on a, on, a, on a chalkboard. But then you really, you know, to kind of dive in, well, when we're saying Kinao, what is the appropriate Kinao? What's the meaning of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's this, this lady and then what she represents. And to me, the biggest thing, just like Prince Kuhio is, we benefit so much from these people who carry these names that if we don't acknowledge it or at least come to, um, awareness of it right that we don't really have the extent of respect and aloha that we could have right for it. so for me it was a way to personally build my aloha and respect for my home yeah and have everybody else join in that ho'o hano hano ya kina'u mm -hmm. right like kina'u klani ano ole right like these names mean so much and 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 they're honored they're the reason why the street is named after them is to honor you know them mm -hmm. in a way what happens when hawaiian names 
are replaced by English names. Oh, nails on a scratch board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. I mean, from Kailua, it, I'm from Kailua, so there's perfect examples of that. I'm, uh, one, lately, and I just say this, I've never, I don't know who the owner of this is. It's just a, you know, just a thinking out loud. We have Olomana, which is mm -hmm. our, our mountain, which has mm -hmm. three peaks. And there was a brand that came out named Three Peaks. Ah. And just, and in my mind, it's like, then you just, right. you're, you're, you're replacing the name and the stories that was with another name right. that's just... Uh, to me, there was uh, didn't carry as much of uh, a story to it, mm -hmm. um, or Mauna Lua, which we now know as Hawaii Kai. Mm -hmm. And I actually did mm -hmm. an episode with an auntie once, um, Anne Marie Kirkland, I believe, mm. and she um, had spent a lot of time talking with Kupuna, the area, mm -hmm. and her response when I threw out the question of you know the what is the importance of the name? Is there something wrong with the name Hawaii Kai? And her response was, "There's nothing wrong with it, but." when you, you acknowledge the name Mauna Lua, you're talking about so many more generations of Mo'olelo and people who fall within that. And then with that comes acknowledging all of that. When you say Hawaii Kai, you're talking about another story which is very short and it's very just talking, of, and Hawaii Kai, for those who don't know, is named after Henry Kaiser, who right. was the developer of that area. Right. So then the story goes to him. And the story they, most people think that it's about the ocean, yeah. that that Kai represents ocean, that Kai actually represents Kaiser. Kaiser. He's the uh, same gentleman who developed uh, Hilton Hawaiian Village as well. Mm. So, I mean, there, there's, then there's that whole, that story. So then you're not acknowledging more older and all the stories of Mo'olelo that came before, which, again, we all benefit and, and are uh, beneficiaries of today. So I think when you start replacing names, one, you're taking away from that story, but two, I mean, I don't know, just for me, it's like, why, why change a name in the first place? Right. You know, there's so much, um, we're, we're so proud to be in Hawaii. We're so proud, and I think the rest of the world loves Hawaii for the glitz and the glamour and, and the, the cultural aspect of things. Um, so even with that, I mean, why not acknowledge the older names? It sounds right. more Hawaiian. <laughs> right, and, you, and like you said, it, it, it provides a, uh, a longer story, but it also gives hints to what is important, you know, in that geographic region, right? Mm -hmm. So we have names, traditional names that get replaced and now people don't realize, oh, the reason why it was named that was because it had a sinkhole over there or because the currents were rough over here. And you don't get that mm -hmm. a lot of the times with the, the new names that are put on. And most of the time, the new names are put on for the sake of ease, mm -hmm. right? So that, so that, People Hawaiian who don't speak hard. Hawaiian, yeah. right, right, um, have something to call it, right, um, and then then you go, oh, well, that's that's kind of lacking, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of empty, you know, and it's even in its intention, you know. W names is such a big thing amongst Indigenous peoples, right, all across the world, um, but recently, last November, in fact, um, Deb Holland, who's the um, Secretary of the Interior, the Department of the Interior first Native um, American female to run that department, wow. right? And so we spent a lot of time, like, we just, every time I say it, I gotta, like, say it like that, the way, so people understand what that means, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a huge, it's a, it, it has, there's such, um, just huge ramifications, right? Like, that can be, she's opened the door, she's kind of bursted open the door, hopefully, and, and there's, there's more natives that can can be in spaces like that. But one of the things she did was um, there was a committee that she formed of a 13 member committee of derogatory geographic names. It was a task force actually. And, and it's because this is so prevalent across um, not only here in Hawaii, but across America also, right? Yeah. Across the continental US, um, uh, Native American names have been replaced. Native Alaskan names have been replaced, um, right? Um, Hispanic names have been replaced all throughout. Um, and so she started this this task force. And two of our Hawaii, two of our Native Hawaiians are actually on that committee, and we aloha them. Awesome. Yeah, Nini Yao Kawaihai and Kamana Olana Mills. Um, both of them are on there. Uh, they both, you know, have a, a, a very good background in, in understanding Hawaii, our people, our places, and so forth, right? 
Um, but one of the things I'm going to ask our staff, can you scroll back down? Because I'm just going to read it verbatim for you folks out there. And I, I have to read it um, this way. This is one of the things that Holland um, has said. And then I'm going to ask you for, you know, your mana'o on this, Kamaka. You know, she says, racist terms have no place in our vernacular or on our federal lands. Our nation's lands and wallets should be places to celebrate the outdoors and our shared cultural heritage, not to perpetuate the legacies of oppression. Today's actions will accelerate an important process to reconcile derogatory place names and mark a significant step in honoring the ancestors who have stewarded our land since time immemorial. So mahalo, um, Secretary mm -hmm. Holland, um, for that statement, right? Um, and here in Hawaii, I mean, we'll have derogatory, you know, outright derogatory um, place names, but we also have the more just insidious, right, um, names that don't reflect. And I'm sorry, I'm going to mm -hmm. pick on Kailua for a little bit. Oh, please do. Right? <laughs> so between the Lanikai and the Enchanted Lakes and, you know, all these places that have kind of stripped away, right, a, mm -hmm. a sense of connection to place, right? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I had to go, w when this came about and the topic was shared with me about derogatory names, I wanted to know exactly what derogatory meant. Because yeah. I think <laughs> what we just think derogatory has to do with more the racism perspective. Mm -hmm. But it, in <coughs> one of the dictionaries I looked at, which is an, an 1828 Webster's Dictionary, it looks, it defines it as, in essence, anything that devalues mm. something, someone, or whatever. So it's not necessarily in a racist perspective. Right. So, I mean, I wanted to look at that because even just the name Lanikai, it may not be derogatory in a lot of people's minds, but it is in a sense when it's devaluing what was the name, what was the story there, because that goes back to another developer. And Lanikai, I mean, if in, in a Hawaiian approach to it, it's, it's wrong. It, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily... It doesn't, it doesn't make what sense. What he's trying to say is it doesn't make sense. It, <laughs> would, it would literally have to be uh, Kailani to make, right. to make sense, um, because they're, they were just trying to get that heavenly ocean, heavenly sea perspective. But again, that only comes back from, I think, the 1920s, 1930s, when that area was developed. And before that, it was Ka'ohao. And mm -hmm. that name comes, I don't know the, the homo olelo, but it had to do with um, I th this lady and a guy who was playing a game. Um, she lost, and the guy had, it was just like out of the kindness of his heart, he um, didn't do what he was going to do, something like that. Please, I invite everybody to go look at it and, and find the whole story for themselves. But I mean, that's a homo olelo right there. Mm -hmm. And... So in that sense, that's derogatory as it's taking away from that. And then you have Enchanted Lakes, which I, I'm born and raised in Enchanted Lakes. I have no idea where that name comes from. <laughs> 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 and we were speaking with um, a friend of mine and, and um, uh, one of the guys who work here about just naming Enchanted Lakes Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And that we want to try to take the effort to see if we can get it renamed. And I was just thinking, you know, when you talk about just Kailua, the name Kailua refers to two bodies of water, which is mm -hmm. Ka'elepulu and Kauai Nui. We have a Ka'elepulu Elementary School. Mm -hmm. We don't have a Kauai Nui Elementary School. So why not take Enchanted Lakes and rename that and bring it, bring out the homo olelo of Kauai Nui and, and that whole perspective. So in an essence, just within those schools, which other people may not think it's a big deal, but I think subconsciously, mm -hmm. it does play a big part in how people think and, and, and go through Kailua. And it, it would have its own mana. Um, that's, that's great. That's an action step, everybody. So watch out for the alerts. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send subscribe. out those action alerts. Yeah. <laughs> Hit subscribe on the, on, the, on the screen. <laughs> and, and yeah, definitely, you know, right, right, a, you know, right down the street, a place that we were just talking about, Kaoha, they recently changed yes. the elementary school name, right? So it is possible. Um, I know with the whole McKinley High School, yeah. you know, debate, because McKinley High School is such an, uh, you know, it's an older school. You know, many people who lived in Honolulu uh, before a lot of the other schools popped up, McKinley and, and Roosevelt, you know, were like the only schools in the entire, you know, district and the other schools came on later. Um, so there was a big pushback, you know, and people said, no, nah, you can't do that nowadays. You know, I was like, well, you know, shout out um, to those members of Halao Mohala I Lima uh, um, who were so effective and one, keeping the story of, of Kaohao, you know, very active in our minds um, and very out there in their beautiful hula, but also for being the advocates for that name change of Kaohao Elementary School, which is the elementary school as you go into, I don't even, I don't even remember the old name now. And I used to, 
but I'm glad. I just it's just Kaoha Elementary School now. Um, as you go no, into you. into Lanikai, <laughs> you know. Um, but you know, some of those names are problematic in our history, right? We have Captain Cook, for mm-hmm. instance, um, on Hawaii Island. We have McKinley High School, right? And if you guys don't know, I mean, there's a lot of material out there now online about McKinley High School and why why it's so problematic, you know, for mm-hmm. us. Um, and and you know people were advocating maybe change it back to Honolulu High School, mm-hmm. you know, which is what its original name was. Actually, I thought that was just in a movie, but there was like no, that was the original name for McKinney High School. I said okay, great, right? But there's some there's some names that inflict or trigger memories of harm to mm-hmm. our people, right? Of course, McKinley was the president at that time of our annexation. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's, there's a lot of that. And if you know anything about the statue and what he's holding in his hands, go check that out too online. That's a whole nother show. Um, but yeah, what do you think about that, about the movement to try and change names back? I, you know, there is something that came across and that whole McKinley High School is a perfect example, you know, without getting in too much, but that's something that I think a lot of people should become a little bit more aware of because when when we say that name, we're giving mana to that name, and then we're bringing back acknowledgement to that. So then in some people's mind is, do we want to keep acknowledging such the hurt and the pain? And then to other people, uh, you know, it's like, you know, it, it is what it is, move on, and let's just, so then there's that whole conversation that comes with it. Um, nonetheless, I think first and foremost, when we talk about those things, there should be in a space of agree to disagree so we can at least have the conversation. Because right. I think that's the first step into, um, fixing any issue is one becoming aware and being educated and that doesn't happen unless we don't have a conversation right but there's something that came across and it just so happened I've, I um, was looking for just documents on street names and there's this one that brings up the term anti-conquest mm. and I've never heard it before mm. and to my best in, in my best ability to understand this anti-conquest is this um, follows within like ag- acknowledging the other while at the same time bringing him down and taking away his power. So you fluff him up, you make him feel good, but at the same time, I'm stealing all your power mm. and, and you, you don't have as much as you did. And I see it as, and, and it's talking about Hawaiian place names in particular. Wow. Where w- we see it, especially with tourism, in, in the sense where we use Hawaiian culture as this fluff. We're elevating mm-hmm. Hawaiian culture. We're showcasing the, the cultural arts and and aside from the beautiful beaches and the blue skies, the hula dancers, the coconut bras, the this and that, and everything that attracts Hawaiian music is a big attractor to tourism. Right. And that's what brings them here. But at the same time, do we have the power to, to elevate our people? Right. Do we have the power to live as a Hawaiian practitioner in this Western world, or are we just being used as the fluff? Mm, mm. And when I read that, I'm like, that's exactly, that's that's exactly, you know, uh, maybe it's not where we want to continue to go to, but it's something that we should acknowledge of where we've come from right. since this pain had started. Right. And a big part of it has to do in terms of your power comes to the names that's being acknowledged. Right. So they would, one of the things that they pinpoint was where, um, we're restricting or we're making it harder for Hawaiian language to be spoken in schools. Mm. While at the same time, let's call this the Aloha State and right. let's put out the, the state model of Uma Ke'el Ka'ina Ikapono and right. change the meaning to what it was originally to make it fit more um, comfortable right. for now all the residents of Hawaii, not necessarily the Hawaiian community. So we're, we're bashing you down right. and restricting you right. because American and English language should be first in here it's even said when there was some type of discrepancy between a Hawaiian law and an English mm-hmm. law, English law English always take precedent. Yeah. So we're pulling you back, but at the same time, let's let's lift you up and let's make it seem like Hawaii is this place and Hawaiians are are loving people and they're gonna accept you because that's they're all about aloha. Right. So is there a balance in that? Right. And I think that's that's the whole point. And that's mm-hmm. why we have now a lot of names that were named after missionaries or right. colonizers. And right. because in this, and I'm just trying to share what has been written was that was their means of claiming their state. Right. So when you look at a lot of the street names, a lot of them are English, but there was a point in our history, I believe it was in the 60s or 70s, 70s, I believe, where there became a, a law where all names from this point in terms of street names had to be Hawaiian. So if you see any old uh, English names, you know it's a little bit older. Older, um, yeah. But that really then brings back to, you know, 
the names that we're acknowledging. I mean, back to McKinley. When we now know this, right. what do you do? What do we do? Do you act right. like you're still ignorant and you don't right. know and you just play right. the game of, oh, it is what it is, let's just move forward. Right. Or do you acknowledge all of that and not to be angry or to be this, um, you know, not to come it through an angry perspective, but can we use this and, and try to find healing from this point moving forward? Right. Or are we still going to just be so laxative and just add it is what it is? Right. And you know what's hard is um, I found in high school here in Hawaii, because we don't have um, like a, like a, a statewide sports team, our high schools mm -hmm. are our, like our NBAs, our NFLs, you know, like they, they are what our people get passionate and behind, right? And so I've heard arguments from people who went to McKinley High School that says, well, that's my alma mater, mm -hmm. you know? And I goes, yeah, I kind of shame your alma mater, you know, like with that, with that name, right? Everything else, great, right? If you had great teachers, great coaches, you know, and and that's so awesome but I would think that as um, as an athlete I was an athlete at Moana Little High School that if we had uh, you know kind of a racist colonizing name uh, somebody who overthrew our country that we might be one of the first advocates right like go like you know what now we know more I'm, I rep this school and, and I don't want that name I don't want to associate with that name right so I'm speaking to all you McKinley people out there yeah I know I know I know you guys are gonna corner me when I when I it's see me out in a kind seat, yeah it's but I love you that's the main thing um, but there's other names right there's there's other names that are out there um, that you know, could possibly be changed. I live now in Alia Manu, which is right next to Alia Pa'akai, AKA Salt Lake, mm -hmm. right? You know, and maybe we can, you know, move to change that one, Pearl City. Um, I remember we had a discussion about this not too long ago that there were, um, I was um, actually talking to Hailama Farden, um, who was a great, you know, culturally knowledgeable person and Olalo Hawaii teacher and, you know, just, mm -hmm. just an all around great person. and. He was talking about Mele from the areas of Pu'uloa, you know, and he said, yeah, you know, I mean, Pearl City, you know, it should be Manana, um, you know, and, and, and place names that are, you know, kind of still relevant, you know, in the street names, you still see those Pearl City names. Um, but he said on the list of names that they had, you know, for that time, Pearl City was the best one, yeah. right? So you got to take it for its time, right? but not saying that we can't change these names now, mm -hmm. right? I came across there's a lot of the street names, at least within Honolulu, a lot of the names came from the newspaper writers, mm. which not necessarily has any connection. So, I, and then it goes wow, back Wow, that is interesting. To, I didn't know that. Um, what's easier to pronounce, what's easier to be connected with everybody, and a lot of it was more English names. And of course, I think, um, then you have those, well, before I go off topic, but yeah, that was one, and, and coming from Hailama Farden, one that he, he was one of my kumus in, in high school, and then I came across him after doing uh, these street segments, and he always was pushing me, do Veritania Street, do Veritania oh, yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah. So I finally was able to get, after I came across enough Mo'olelo to, to right. put together, after all the street names that I have done, I think it's been over four years I've been doing these street segments. The one street segment I got the most flack on was Baratania Street. Oh. And the homo olelo, for those who don't know, is Baratania is actually a Hawaiian word. Mm -hmm. And it's properly pronounced Baratania. Baratania. Yeah. I put it out there, and I don't try to read comments on Facebook. I try to just let it be, <laughs> and you know, I don't, I I don't want to deal with that drama. But I was just curious. A lot of people just didn't believe. Oh. It's just, I, I don't believe that. There's no such thing as Bs. There's no such thing as, as Ns and Ts and all these other things. And I'm thinking, and I just let it go. I don't share my manao, but it just proves to me the ignorance that, the, that, I was just gonna say. that you have. Because if you knew, then you would know. Right. And if someone right. who's just trying to share just so we can educate and come on the same page, hopefully the intention, yeah, is that we can maybe start pronouncing as Baratania. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I can pronounce it on the news. And then, you know, right. then become a little bit more normalized. But there was a lot of pushback on it. So then that, what is, what am I supposed to take from that? Like, do right. we continue to share these stories or, or do we just continue to do it expecting to get flack with the hopes that it just creates a big old ripple that it would eventually Right, impact? right, right. No, definitely keep doing it. Create the ripples, <laughs> right? Let the ripples <laughs> flow. I'm like even now, like I'm on a mission yeah. now. It is Bertania now every time I'm going to, what's on Bertania? And for those Bertania? who don't know, it's because the British consulate used to be on that street. Oh, that makes and sense. in your mind, just think directly across the street from the state capitol where the, um, uh, the, the governor's Maru mansion oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Washington places. 
in my mind, I think it was right over there. Oh, right on that side. Ah. Yeah. But that's the thing. It goes back to like we all have the names tell a story of right. that place, either of what right. happened there naturally, the elements that come through there, or just Mo'olelo that has then at one point in history become attached to that place. Right, like Aliyah Pa'akai, just for instance, right, if, if you don't know that that's the name, right, you miss out on this whole epic Hiyaki Kapolio Pele story, mm -hmm. right? Like you miss out on on how Pele travels throughout Hawaii, and that's one of the places, right? Because mm -hmm. you imagine, right in Salt Lake, right? Pele was there, <laughs> right? Trying to, trying to open up her volcano, right? Um, right there. But you miss that whole thing mm -hmm. if it just stays Salt Lake. Then you just think, oh, okay. There's one place in the bluff one uncle had told me, and I, I, I hope this is the correct name, but where they, for those who know where the bluff is in Kailua, mm. that whole ridge and that whole area is actually known Kaluo Pele. Mm. That was one of the stopping spots of Pele as she moved by. And I was always told that there is, has to be a source of water. Every place mm -hmm. that she lived had mm -hmm. to have a source of water. So mm -hmm. Kaele Pulu was her source of ah. water. So then when you think of that, like, oh, Kailua is a lot more Hawaiian than I think we think of it is today. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. You just, yeah, 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 yeah. Just bring I'll, it out. Yeah, yeah. Even you know. Waikiki is another prime example. Right. You look at all the street names in Waikiki. I right. think Waikiki is a place that local people have a love-hate relationship with. Right. We don't necessarily right. go there if we don't have to. But then when you look at the street names and then you just realize all the history that remains right. in there, there's it's such a Hawaiian place. When I look at those Ali'i names, right, like Kane Kapolei, mm -hmm. you know, like right in the middle of, of Waikiki, right? And, and it always reminds me that this place is more than just these buildings that are here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and it should mean more to me. Right. I come from Palolo Valley, so that was our kai anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but growing up, I used to just, you know, pass by all those names, right? Kailani, you know, um, of course, Kalakawa, you know, just all these elite names that are just throughout all of Waikiki. Mm -hmm. And you just go, yeah, no, this is an incredibly wonderful place, you know, to Almost, be. Almost, I mean, a lot of elite resided in there. They have their, their summer palaces or, or their summer homes and their retreats and so when you then learn that as a Hawaiian who didn't like to go in Waikiki, then it's more like, this oh, is I'm our not place. Let you take that joy right. from me. Like right. that, that's this is yeah, it's my place, it's and my I'm place. gonna go down there and I'm gonna try to utilize it and make the best of it as I possibly. You can. should see me in Waikiki. <laughs> you would think that I was I was like you know queen regent you know for the day. You, you should Look see me you. walk around in Waikiki. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like fully absorbed that. No, this is my place, right? You know, and not so much Ho'okano as I just have so much aloha for you know for that space and i have it's hard to see through all the noise mm -hmm. um but i i force myself to do that and we're gonna do something fun right now because we've been a little bit serious you know for instance okay. yeah this, this is like the kind first thing that comes to your mind maile or maili maili <laughs> kamuela or waimea waimea <laughs> what's the most interesting or unusual place name that you have um heard here in hawaii oh well, then you get into the names that if we were, <laughs> it's like Hawaiian music. If we were to translate our Hawaiian music into English, it wouldn't necessarily be allowed <laughs> to be played on the radio because right, then you right, realize right. we're very um, right. sexual people in a sense. And very descriptive. And very descriptive. Very and descriptive. we like to have a lot of fun. Right. Um, so one, when I came across it, was Moku Ume Ume, oh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, Ford yeah. Island. Uh -huh. And Moku Ume Ume, so this is just the limited knowledge that I know, but Ume Ume is a game that would be played um, by couples who couldn't have a ch child. Oh, okay, and yeah. um, my understanding is, so people would go to Ford Island, Moku Ume Ume, and they would all sit in like this big circle. And, and then there was this one game warden who had like this wand, mm -hmm. and he would go around the circle, and the only rule of the game was that you c couldn't get jealous of right. who he chose. So what he did was he chose two different people who weren't couples, but the whole idea was that they would go, go to your side of the island, fool around because the whole point is to procreate. So then the other person of the couple couldn't get jealous because you're going to continue your lineage or whatever. Right. But if we were to say that today, right. <laughs> and right. explain that on the radio or on TV, it wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily be able to share that story. There's a few of us been trying to get a game going for like the last <laughs> 10 years. I'm just putting it out there, you know. Oh, um, we have a bunch of those. Right, right, those right. <laughs> no, but you know what is the best part of, of that Ume Ume game, right? The best part is that well, I think the, we all know. the same. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> the second best part, because there is a better part, right, that, that, that we know. But the second best part 
is that there's a saying that goes along with that, right? Which is, um, if, if you win, I win. Mm -hmm. And if I win, you win, yeah. right? Um, everybody wins. There's no losers in that game, mm -hmm. right? And because everybody comes into it. And it's done. The game is done with a lot of um, kind of, of fanfare uh, and, and, and talent. Right there's chanting that's done. There's hula that's done. Right, um, Hiyaka and and Lohiel when they come to Oahu they play that game. You know they're on that island. Right, so there's a there's a lot of our like just Hawaiian ways of mm -hmm. being that's showcased in that very risque game. <laughs> um, again, that we've been trying to get going for at least the last ten years. <laughs> one day, one day maybe. A lot you know? of people can yeah. benefit from that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of those names. I mean, right. from Kailua, the one marker that separates Kailua from Kaneohe is from the point Konohu Nui, mm -hmm. and it's ridge that extends <laughs> down. Konohu Nui, if you were to translate it, again, we wouldn't necessarily be able to talk about it. Um, but we have a lot of those. Kohelepe lepe. Try, try Konohu. I want to hear your the kind your Konohu your no, TV say, oh, definition. TV. Um, yeah, let's let's try. So I mean, no, you can. Or you could go podcast. You could oh, go both. Okay. You could you could start in the TV definition and then go right into podcast um, definition. I'll just so Konohu Nui literally is um, his his big fruits. <laughs> yes. So it then is. you can that take exactly. that as as however you want to take that. Um, but the mess, I think the mo'olelo behind that was he threw his big fruits to a lady that he was trying to get or something yeah. to that extent. Yeah. Um, but again, it all comes down to, again, because for us, sexual things wasn't necessarily about the sexual fun of it. It mm -hmm. was all about the, the continuing mm -hmm. our family because that's right. the most important thing. That's like mele ma'is, right? Exactly. Many people think, like, why would you? Why would you and why especially do you like name at, your private and parts? And at birth, why would an adult name a child at birth their, their private parts, you know, yeah. and give it a name, right? And it's because of procreation. We wanted to celebrate that and also kind of... Right, it's it's everybody. Every time they hear the mele ma'i, everybody's energy is going behind that function mm -hmm. of procreation. Mm -hmm. And you remember, um, there was a time period in our history where I think it was one out of four of us died. Mm -hmm. Right, massive loss to life. Um, so that's when you see in the newspapers all it, like all these mele start popping up, right? Because it's to remind us to hold ululahui again, right? We have to. We have to procreate, we have to invigorate, right? we have to bring the things out of the darkness that was you know, in the shadows only, bring them out to inspire a people's back to life, mm -hmm. you know, almost, right? So these names, these, these ways of naming, uh, things like that become super important um, you know, to all of us. But uh, when can people catch you on, on TV? Um, when can they? Oh, so I just want to remind our audience. I have to think about this. Um, so I, I usually work from Wednesday through Friday as a reporter, so you can catch me during the evenings. Um, and then on the weekends, I'm the weatherman. Cool. And then when is your show? So the show airs. So Aloha Authentic is really a two-component mm. project, and it could be a little confusing. But every Wednesday, we have our street segment. Mm. And then once a month, we're in our third season, and we're – we finished the first four episodes of this 12 in the season, but we're working on the next four, um, for th which is, I think we started in September. So it's once a month, the last Wednesday of every month does it air, the next episode. That's awesome. So we all got to catch it. See, I watch um, I watch things out of sync. I don't watch things um, when they're live because I'm usually working. Um, so I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm always grabbing it when, when I want to watch it. So I watch him every day of the week, you know, and he's not even there, you know, <laughs> um, every day of the week. Um, but that's when I get to pull off, you know, pull off shows and, and, and watch them and so forth. So I super enjoy your presence. Um, so you. proud of you. Uh, and what you're doing, not only on TV, but I see you around in our communities. I can't wait till you come back out as an artist and, and start showcasing your work again. Thank you. Because um, that's so beautiful and just the many facets of you that we all can be proud of, right? Before we leave, is there anything else you want to share with our audience? Um, not really. I mean, if, I, if you don't know Aloha Authentic, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 Go to alohaauthentic.org or k22.com to find out more. But no, I just really want to just mahalo you for having me. 
I was, this was really fun, and I'm, I'm hopefully I didn't. I'm really bad because sometimes, like, like mentioned, I'm never really in this seat, so this is a whole different perspective. My, I always tell people I have this one balloon, and the balloon kind of blows. <laughs> so I try really hard to make sure this stays over me because I can go off tangent. So no, easy. you know, I'm I glad we stuck on topic. <laughs> no, and you were so awesome. I wish, I wish we had more time. Um, I'm always one for going over time. I never pay attention to the script. I always um, say two Portuguese at one table. Is I very know, dangerous. right? And I'm a wannabe Portuguese, so that's worse. I'm not even Portuguese, but I want to be. Yeah, I want to be. So the kind that's even worse because I think I try harder. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) especially to make this show show longer. Um, But I know the audience that's out there. I mahalo all of you. I see you guys out there and I mahalo all your guys feedback that you guys give us. And I know that you enjoy our segments and our guests. So thank thank you you from from all of us. Yeah, no, it's fun. We get to, you know, we get to talk about issues um, like the naming, you know, that's happening and the larger movement that's happening, uh, you know, across the continental U.S. with our indigenous cousins, you know, up there and the struggle that's going on. And then we just get to have fun, too. But I want to ask you to do something. Um, and one day I'll have a sign off. I don't know. Maybe maybe <laughs> one day. I got to hustle, though. I got to start sending my stuff to all those news people um, just like you. Um, but because I don't have a sign off can you do you can close us out with your sign off did you know now you do shoots <laughs> we ho kako aloha mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm.